is determined by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He has the final say concerning the righteous ones of the Lord. How to receive a breakthrough as a believer in all our battles. Remember, we signed in this life. We are in a battle in reference to Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse 10 all the way to 13. But we are not alone in this battle. Our master king Jesus, the king of kings, is with us in this battle. And we say it for us to have a breakthrough as believers, we must always put God first in our lives. I'm just trying to look up where we left last Sunday. We must put God first in everything that we do. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about life because we are disturbed by many things in this life. What you will eat or drink about your bond, what you wear, is not life more important than food and body more important than clothes. So do not worry, say, what shall I eat, or what shall I drink, or what shall I wear? Because that the two says, even the pagans that do not know God, they are also looking after those things. They learn after these things. Underline the word, for the pagans learn after these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. These things means that they are not uh, the ultimate. They are these things. They are not so important. They are called these things. Your heavenly father knows that you need them. The pagans learn after them. But we should not look like the pagans. We should know that our God is our source and he is able to meet our needs at any given time. Let's not run after the things of this world and forget to put God first in this life. That is the message. And then verse 33, he ends by saying, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you as well. They are referred to as these things. These things should not disturb you because they are not of any importance as seeking God's kingdom first or putting God first in your life, allowing God to take the center stage in your life. That is the primary thing. Do not run after the secondary things. We call them temporal things because they are here for a while. Remember the story of Jesus and Mary and Martha. When Mary received Jesus, and they sat at the feet of Jesus. Married her sister was so busy in the kitchen trying to put things into order so that they can have a meal. Things that were not necessary. They are called these things because they are not necessary at all. But when she came out of the kitchen, Having a spirit of anger, he queried Jesus, don't you care, master? Don't you care that I'm in, in this kitchen alone and my sister is seated here with you doing nothing? That is a kind of mind. That is a, not a natural mind. 
is not a spiritual mind. Hallelujah. Jesus answered her and told her, Mother, mother, you are worried about many things. You are worried about these things. Only one thing is required of you. And Mary has found that one thing. When you are at Jesus' feet, you have a life. You are at peace. You have everything that you need. That's why for you to succeed, you have to put God first in your everyday life. Number two, you have to have a transformed heart. Psalms 51 and verse 10 where David said, Creator, enemy, a pure heart. Number three, embark on prayer and fasting. And number four, you have to set up your strategic plans before the Lord and you commit them to the Lord. As a family or as an individual, you need to come up with a strategic plan concerning your family. Because the Lord God will make your plans to succeed. Amen? When you commit them to him. Proverbs 16 verse 3. The Bible says, commit everything that you do to the Lord and it will cause your plans to succeed. It is good as a family to have some plans on how you want to excel in this life and the plans that you have, you committed them to the Lord and the Lord will cause your plans to succeed. The problem is you don't take time to plan with your family. You do things you do though. And therefore you cannot succeed in this life. I'm talking about a breakthrough of believers. You do not expect to have a breakthrough when you do not follow the strategies that the Lord has put in his word. Amen? I have started number one. I have said that you have to put God first. You have to have a transformed heart. Number three, you have to embark on prayer and fasting. Number four, you have to be, you have to have confidence. You have to be committed and be consistent. Number five, you have to set up plans for yourself, plans for your family, because you are a visionary man or woman of God. And any visionary man of God or woman of God must have some strategic plans. The plans that will give you success in whatever you have envisioned on. And then you will set goals on how to achieve. And because you exist together, in the house with your wife, with your husband, and with your adult children, and you have no plans for the year 2024, you have no plans for the year 2025, you have no plans anyway. What do you expect you're going to do when you are planless? When you have no plans, it means you have no vision. And where there is no vision, people perish. How do you think that things will run on just automatically like that? You don't sit down and say, this is the pathway that we want to follow the year 2024, 2025 and beyond. The next two years, this is what we want to achieve. And you lay it before the Lord in prayer. You talk to God about it in prayer as a family or as an individual. Amen. If you do not do so, you will not be timing on one 
particular place without moving. Two years down the line, you are still mark timing on the same place without any progress or making any step forward towards achieving. Because there is nothing that you are a challenge to achieve. There is nothing that you are geared towards achieving in the year. Even the church without plans is a doomed church. If they do not know what they want to do in the next two years, in the next five years, then it is unfortunate. Hallelujah. Because if the government has laid its strategic plans even for 2030, how about you? Born as your son. Children of the kingdom should be wise in making effective plans and uh, laying them before the altar of the Lord. Saying, Lord, this is what we have as a family, the year 2024 and beyond. God help us to achieve these plans because they are golden plans that the Lord God has given you through his spirit. And unless you put that into action, you remain the same way. You rotate on the same axis without making any end way. But God wants you to commit everything to him. Everything that you are planning, everything that you are doing, every plan, commit to him that you will make your plan to succeed. Praise God. And do not say without any plan or rather do not just stay in the city of Nairobi without a dream of where you want to be tomorrow. Because God is ready to fulfill every dream that you have for yourself, for your family, for your business also, for your children as well. Hallelujah. Praise God. My sister, my brother, I'm helping you to visualize the intention of God concerning you is that he wants you to begin something so that he can make it to succeed. You have to initiate something. Listen to me, church. God will never initiate anything for you. Never. He has given you the brains. He has given you the brain to think. And whatever you lay your hands on, he will prosper it. But unless you lay your hands on something, what is he going to prosper? What is he going to do? Amina? He says, I will bless the work of your hands. What are you doing with your hands? What are you doing with your brain? What plans do you have in the city? Do you have a plan that you are going to get settled in the city of Nairobi? Do you have any And if you have that plan, do you have the strategic plans for now you are going to settle in Nairobi? If you want to settle in Nairobi, it means you have to save some money so that you can buy a plot, strategic plans. We will relocate you from where you are to a better place where you will call my house. Amen? That is number five. Take it very seriously. Don't say in the city of Nairobi without a strategic plan for your future. Without a strategic plans for your tomorrow. Don't live in the city of Nairobi without an agenda. Because it's your agenda, the Lord God will promote and cause it to prosper. It is your agenda that God will bring it to fulfillment. If you have no agenda, 
You are living like a neutron gear. Uh, you are never engaged. So what do, what do you want God to do? Si hata wewe mwenyewe unashuhudia sina mbele na sina nyuma. Sasa unataka mfanye nini? Huna mbele una nyuma sasa? Si uko hapo tu. Si utaka hapo hapo tu. Until you decide kuwa na mbele na kuwa na nyuma na kando kando tu na chini. Praise God. Ili baraka za Mungu ambazo zinaenda mbele ukamata za mbele. Baraka za Mungu ambazo zinaenda kando kando ukamata za kando kando. Amen. Sanju ukamate. So that you can have a balanced life controlled by the Holy Spirit. Consistent. Without giving up. Persistence. Doing it again and again and again and again without surrender. Consistent people they do not surrender. They do not give up. They do not despair. They do not look back. They do not quit. Consistent people. Praise God. The reason why at times we do not succeed in life is because we are not consistent. Even in the social life. Where you are not consistent, you don't expect success. Even in the church ministry, you cannot be successful if you are not consistent. I have talked about having a family altar whereby you are able to consistently have family devotions every evening. Consistently. But you have done for two days, two weeks, and you are no longer holding the family devotions god is looking for that person that will be consistent in doing what he has requested over joshua received the message of the lord when god spoke to him joshua 1:1 1, 1, that my servant moses is dead you are the one to take over the leadership of these people of Israel. And you are the one that will cause them to cross over, leave a Jordan, and settle them on Canaan land that I promised to their forefathers. Joshua gathered courage. Joshua and the son of confidence that because God has said so. And when you read from the book of Deuteronomy, God and foretold them that it is he who will go ahead of them so they should not be afraid. Joshua was there. He had self-confidence. They crossed the river Jordan in a supernatural miracle. And then he realized Surely it works. If we have crossed this river Jordan in a supernatural way, then God is with us. Amazingly, he was told, I have given Jericho to you. These are the instructions. Go around six times. Seventh time, go around seven times. And the seventh time, Blow the whistle, blow the trumpet, make a shout. He did exactly that. And the walls of Jericho collapsed. Hallelujah. That gave Joshua self confidence that God is with us. And that's why he was able to settle the children of Israel in Canaan land. Because he knew that with God all things are possible. And when the children of Israel and they settled in Canaan land and they occupied the lands and the gardens and the farms that they had not planted, they enjoyed 
the fruit of the Lord, the vines, and all other cities that they are not built. God gave them. How often do you have the family devotions? Whereby the Spirit of God can give you direction on the plans that you have. If you are a lone ranger, you will make time for many years without making a breakthrough. I'm teaching you slowly today and very slowly for you to understand. Because when you understand how God operates, then you will swim in the operation of God and uh, the blessings of God will follow you and overtake you. Amina? But when you are operating with your sense knowledge, without even consulting anybody, unasema mimi nikisema isha sema. Nikiamua ni miamua. Na umiamua mara mingi na umeambukia kwa shinda. And you have failed miserably. Na pandu unashikiria egoism. Inda kupereka wapi. You are there saying I'm a man. Who has refused that you are not one? Hello? Praise God. Yes. But a man of wisdom sits together with his family. They plan together. They lay their plans before the altar of the Lord. And they trust God that he will bring their plans to pass. They believe that God will bring their plans to realization. Because they are one in the spirit. There is the power of agreement. My brothers and my sisters, the moment you start despising each other, feeling that you are better than, you have started failing and you are going to fail miserably. The Bible says, accept one another as Christ accepted us. Accept one another. Plan together. Lest you uphold the family values. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. Hello? Praise God. That is why you are alone in the church. Your children are not here. Because you don't plan together with your children. That's why you are alone. Your wife is not here or your husband. Because you don't plan together. Yet you, are, you live together. You lock the house. One house, you lock the house and you go inside and you sleep there. But when you are here, single-handedly, alone, and uh, you have children, and you are married, your wife is not here, your husband is not here, your children are not here. Where are they? May the Lord help you to know how to accept one another, how to build one another, how to have family altar. Whereby, every evening, you have a devotion with everybody. Even if your husband is a drunkard, Develop a routine of praying every evening before you retire to bed. Apply that method. God is able to touch that man through the prayers that you do before you go to sleep. And they pray for your husband sincerely from the heart, saying, Lord God, you do not make a mistake to me to be married to this man. I pray that you save his soul. And uh, I pray against the spirit of alcohol and drunkenness in my husband. If he's so drunk, lay your hands on him because he may not know what you are doing. But there is impartation of the power of the Holy Spirit. He will never know what the Lord will do. He might not sleep that night with God or things are Possible. Do not. Do not. Be. Cheated. 
God is never mocked. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. God is never mocked. Whatever a man soweth, so shall he reap. So good things, and you reap good things. Whatever you sow is what you are going to reap. Train yourself to move in this direction. And very soon, before the year ends, you will be somewhere. I'm talking to somebody. Before the year 2024 ends, you will be somewhere. The people that have listened to this message, before the year ends, you will be somewhere. By the grace of God. People will confess, surely this one has been remembered by the Lord. And God is faithful. He is going to remember you. And he is going to transform your life. And people will say, surely this one is different from this year. This person is advancing towards prosperity that we never thought he would penetrate in his life. Why? Because with God, all things are possible. And when you, are, you embrace these teachings, you are going to turn around your life and you are going to enjoy abundant blessings now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you that you love, you have loved us with an endless love. Your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for every participant in this fellowship today. Oh, hallelujah. May the teachings of your word enable us to be settled in our Christian lifestyle. Always being committed to do that which is right before your eyes, that which is good before your eyes, that which is just before your eyes. Help us, Lord, to have self-confidence that with you, we will make it. Help us, Jesus, to be consistent in following your word, in being endure of your word, and not only listeners to your word. Allow us to put the word that you have learned today into practice. And we are going to reap the results of it very soon. Before the year ends, some people will be giving wonderful testimonies of what the Lord has done in their lives. I speak a blessing to each and every one of us. For those that are viewing this program, somebody want to give your life to Jesus, may the Lord help you. Let me lead you to a short prayer that you can repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you as I am. I'm a sinner and I need forgiveness of my sins. Jesus, forgive me. I receive you now to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my life. In Jesus' name we pray. You can look for our church where and by you can grow spiritually and finally we welcome you to our church, Redeemed Gospel Church, located in Isiri Section 3. Yes, you can contact us through the numbers below the screen. And may the Lord help you. We will continue praying for you. May the Lord bless the church. Thank you.